Okay guys, so now we're moving on to the wiring harness in the engine compartment. So we'll zoom in here. Okay, so we've got this here. This was kind of on the left side of the engine bay. Um, it's the cruise control um, controller. Um, we've got the MAF sensor as well and uh, just some other odds and ends. This in fact was for the AC, so I'm actually gonna clip that off. And then this side swung around to the, uh, the driver's side of the, uh, of the engine bay, and it included the uh, igniter and uh, the starter cable, and then uh, just some grounds, which I like to keep the grounds uh, solid especially in the 95 you don't have to do as much cutting as in the 90 to 94 so i'm just going to kind of keep that hole and that goes through this grommet right here and once we get inside we'll uh we'll go ahead and pop that out the other grommet right here which i've kind of popped um, that contains the engine wiring so the engine cables the oxygen sensors and uh, managed to pull that oxygen sensor out from the middle of the car and um, the other side of the engine bay over here once again we have the uh, alternator cables and uh, what we need to do is kind of loosen up the, uh, the fender here so there's you know, three or four bolts on the top here, this top rail. And then there's two kind of hidden bolts, one down here. Uh, you have to open up the door to get it. And then one down here as well. Uh, you have to open up the door to get that from the door side. And then uh, down below here, there are two. And then random bolts and whatnot along here. There is one uh, behind the the driver's light but I'm just gonna leave that as I have plenty of room as you can see to kind of peel it back a little bit and get to the harness that's uh, back behind here and uh, it actually enters into the uh, the cab kind of tucked underneath here sorry kind of bad lighting but uh, that's what we're gonna do next. Well, here's the uh, the engine uh, compartment fuse box, and uh, as you can see, I snipped um, m the majority of these wires that go into it. In fact, all of them, and so those are those are not needed for our conversion. Um, and so the alternator cables then are able to sneak through this grommet here in the fender, uh, and you know you can snip the cables that go up to the front of the uh, of the car as well and then you'll see that uh, there are cables right there ready to go through the um, large grommet and into the cabin. So a bit of a gap in the footage here but I managed to remove the dash and um, basically um, there are just a few bolts on the side here there are a couple bolts along uh, the windshield and uh, some on the other side over there and um, there's a, uh, a brace that goes across that's kind of a pain that you have to uh, unbolt from this side it has a little clamp that goes over unbolt that unbolt the far side right about where my finger is right about there and then what I do since it takes a very specialized um, uh, security screw right there. I just cut with a hacksaw the portion of the uh, the structural beam, and uh, that seems to uh, work, do the trick. So, as you can see, the uh, the heater blower is just about ready to come out. It's just a few bolts, just or nuts, just on these studs across the way. There's a couple down underneath as well. And um, the AC condenser I've pulled out, and the heater box is about to fall out, and then we just have to take out the actual, uh, the actual um, 
heater core. So we're going to go ahead and work on that and then start pulling all of the wiring harness through from the engine side. All of the heater boxes are out now, um, the heating and air conditioning that is. I've peeled up the carpet to reveal the cover plate for the um, for the computer. So it's just these uh, four nuts and bolts that need to come off. And uh, I've kept the um, cruise control uh, brain, which kind of sat right there, um, just in case we want to install cruise control. The grommets we're concerned with are this one, the one back behind this huge clump of wires, and if we follow the um, harness around, the other one, which is the alternator cables, is kind of tucked right back in there. And um, kind of the accessory sort of stuff we can just clip. This is coming from the steering wheel, so this is the ignition wiring and whatnot. These were some of the heater controls. So a lot of this wiring just doesn't translate to our Subaru swap into a Volkswagen. So we're just going to get started kind of pulling things into the cabin here and then uh, disconnecting and taking out the computer. Uh, kind of midway through the wiring harness uh, pull, I have uh, pulled the two feeds out of the uh, engine compartment there. Um, and they're all kind of just hanging out down here. Uh, I pulled the computer and this is the uh, big cable in the 95. The uh, the 95 start was the first year they started putting the uh, computers on the um, passenger side foot rest area. Uh, all the rest of the years uh, prior to that are kind of over here um, on the A pillar of the driver's side. So I'm going to continue uh, pulling this wiring harness out. Here is the empty uh, cockpit that does not have the wiring harness. It has been pulled out and uh, I'll show you what the harness looks like basically and laid out as if it were in the car and show you everything that you need to keep. Well, as seen um, in the basic layout uh, in the car here more or less, uh, we'll start with the computer and we're uh, going to just move forward and uh, follow the path. So we have the uh, computer and its cable. It goes to the main harness which is kind of right in here. This is all the main harness. Off of the main harness, just a quick little side loop is the cruise control controller. Coming back to the main harness here, we go to the first grommet and that contains the engine connectors, these big gray plugs, and the oxygen sensors uh, connections. So that's the front one. Then we'll follow the rear one back to where it is. So let's zoom out a little bit, go back to the main harness. Let's go to the second grommet. This one has the igniter on it as well as just some grounds that I like to keep together. Coming back, we go to the cruise control component here. And on the 95, there's this sensor here that I'm not positive what it is. I'm gonna take a little closer look and edit the video. But uh, right now, this, this I'm not sure about, so I'm just keeping it. And then we continue, and we come to the mass airflow sensor. Okay, let's come back to the main harness, then we'll cruise left, and we come to the uh, select monitor cable and the uh, diagnostic connectors. And back to the main harness, and we'll continue. Then we break off here. There's a diode here. I believe we need that um, on the 95, but since I'm not totally sure, I'm just going to double check. We come down and we have the OBD2 connector. I just cut it out of the panel just because I 
kind of like uh, this bracket and I may trim it down so that I can mount it uh, near the computer. Okay, we'll come back up to the main harness and we need the um, the ignition relay and the fuel pump relay. Ignition relay is the big brown and the fuel pump relay is the green here. Come back to the main harness and we continue. This is uh, the lead that goes through the, the left fender um, out toward um, the uh, main fuse box in the uh, engine compartment and the only ones we're concerned about are the alternator cables so we'll just follow that and you'll see a big chunk cut off that's from the um, main relay box in the engine compartment and then we continue and we have our alternator cables and that's that's it for the wiring harness let's throw it in a box and work on it later